I'm Leo Phillips, host of This Must Be The Gig. We're a weekly podcast that documents everything about the world of live music. Speaking with choreographers, costume and set designers, the people who run beloved venues and festivals, and, of course, speaking with musicians about that one gig that changed their lives. Get your peek behind the curtain at consequenceofsound.net, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. Consequence Podcast Network. Hey, welcome to another edition of Kyle Meredith with an audio interview series presented by WFPK Independent Louisville at WFPK.org. Consequence of Sound and the Consequence Podcast Network. If you're not already a subscriber to the series, I do hope you take a moment to hit that subscribe button before we get started here. And again, you can do that. Uh, anywhere you get your favorite podcasts from, like iTunes and Apple Podcasts, you can uh, subscribe at Spotify, at YouTube. There's probably a bunch of other places out there that I don't even know exist that you're listening from that you can also subscribe there as well. And I should also I should also mention I have a brand new show on WFPK. I, I've moved. If you're a if you're a frequent listener, when I was on at uh, at noon Eastern, that's changed. I now have the Kyle Meredith with Radio Show. WFPK.org is where you can hear it Monday through Friday at 6 o'clock, 6 p.m. Eastern. It's a one-hour show. You'll hear some of these interviews, the uh, the brand-new songs of the day, music news, and, of course, some anniversary celebrations. That's WFPK.org. I'm Kyle Meredith. Today, my guest is Bill Callahan. He's one of my all-time favorite songwriters. That goes back to the very first time that I heard him uh, as part of the High Fidelity soundtrack, the uh, Nick Hornby, uh, John Cusack, Jack Black movie, where Bill Callahan went under the name Smog at the time and had that uh, great song, Cold Blood at Old Times, which, by the way, we'll talk about towards the end of the interview. But the big highlight of this interview is he has a brand new record. It's called Shepherd in a Sheepskin Vest. It's a double album. 20 beautiful songs that paint a very specific picture of Bill's life these days. He's singing about a, a surprising domestic turn in his life, being married, in love, and having a new son. Of course, we're going to talk about how that influenced his writing and, and worked its way into the songs, how he's taken a lot of uh, inspiration from the dreams uh, that he has and, and also that his wife has had, and balancing all of this new life in his life with the subject of death and how that's important. He is easily one of the greatest lyricists of our time. Talking about the album Shepherd in a Sheepskin Vest, it's Kyle Meredith with Bill Callahan. Hello. Well, first off, I, I should just congratulate you because Shepherd in a Sheepskin Vest, you know, it, it's a beautiful record, and, and the fact that it's a double album or or a four sided record, however you want to say that, I mean, it's a it's a it's a wealth that you've given us here. So so congratulations and, and thank you right off the bat because it is fantastic. Oh, thank you. You know, with the amount of songs in mind, I, I've read the interviews where you said that there was a time in between that you you couldn't really find the muse and and the songs weren't coming. But now that, you know, once they did come, the, there, there are a lot of songs here. With that in mind, do you find that once they start coming, is it easier these days after having 30 years in the rear view of, of learning how to write songs? Writing songs has, like, never changed for me. The, the feeling and the, the way that it comes and the way that I work with what's coming, and it's, it's been the same from... The first album to this one, and this time it wasn't like I wasn't really a, a matter of losing any muse or anything. It was just kind of learning how to converse with that muse in an honest way. I'd say like it's basically learning learning a new language, kind of because I was a different person and I was in a place that I didn't really think I would ever be in, which is married with a kid. And it wasn't really. A, a desire or a concern of mine until I met my wife to be, and then it all like then I desired those things that I'd never really desired. But then it made me I just had a whole new structure to my waking hours and my sleeping hours too. But learning to you know speak in my new voice and still telling the truth instead of just something that I felt like I was supposed to say as a, a new father and a new husband. And... Oh, I, I read in um, I know one interview, I think you were talking about sort of what you're getting at right now, that you, I don't 
know if compromise is the right word, but but you know, the songwriter that you envisioned, you sort of at the moment maybe wanted to keep it different from the personal self, and and at some point you had to kind of give those two in together. Yeah, I, I wanted to because I found myself in a place where, in the majority of population has found themselves and I always felt kind of outside of that by not having a family and but then once you start having one then you understand all those people that do even if you don't know them but if you see them on the street it's kind of a, a sudden bond where you can just you kind of know it's a window into their world to see a little toddler as opposed to usually when you pass a stranger on the street you've got no idea what what they're up to, I, uh, what their days are like. I remember trying to explain that to someone, and, and I said, you know, you, th- you think you know love or whatever before you have a child, and you think you know what love is, and then you have a child, and it's almost like there was a, there was a color in the rainbow that, that you never knew existed, and suddenly you, you have that color. Yeah, yeah, it's true. It's just like a different life looks different. <laughs> Um, I mean, artists always get asked about you know, how parenthood changes you, uh, you know, a, a, as a writer. And, and, and most of them, it's just about like, well, now I have to find the time. You know, it's, it's, it is about time management. But, but I do feel like from the sound of it, it affected you in a much deeper way than just time management. Um, yeah. I mean, just at the bottom line was probably time by the time I got to that bottom line. But it was just first I had to figure out what being a father meant and a husband and but in the end it is it's just time that required on on the on the more trivial side (laughs) you know how 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 parenthood can affect your writing but but there's also something about how a kid and and what a kid is drawn to um musically can also affect you (laughs) yeah i'll take uh you know you have a song here about writing and it's called writing and and it's a great song and and you kind of mentioned in there where have all the good songs gone and I thought about a quote Jason Isbell had said something to me once about, um, you know, if a shit comes in, it's going to be shit that goes out. And I, thought, and I wondered in your case, you know, it, it, do you find that, that your child has been drawn to the type of uh, music that you may not have paid attention to before? Is that infiltrating your world now? Yeah, I mean, he's not actually like when he was really little, he music just because he had no choice. <laughs> <laughs> and he liked children's songs. No, but he's not, he's not an asshole about it. <laughs> um, but, you know, I get it. You know, his, he just wants different different things. And, I mean, there's a song on my new record that mentions the Hulk, and he, that's the, he's fixated on that because he's fixated on superheroes, like a lot of kids his age. And uh, I tried to play Tugboats and Tumbleweeds for him, which is, you know, largely based on... Like me singing to him, at least eighty percent of it, and he, you know, just like left the room. <laughs> so this, you know, he's he knows what he wants. At the beginning of the album, there is a dream of a black dog on a beach. It's also the title of the song. There, how much do dreams influence your writing? Because in one sound, you know, in one sense, uh, a lot of your songs sound something like a dream. But you've written about dreams before. I mean, one of my all-time favorites of yours, Idmal Clackshaw. Uh, directly goes there. Does, does that? Do, do you find that happening a lot in your writing, the turning to dreams? Yeah, I mean, it's I definitely dreams should be listened to, and they're not just frivolous nonsense. And even like with that song, I had some scraps of those lyrics for several years, and they never really fit it together. But then I had a dream about that image of a black dog and chasing white seagulls and the shadows and i just realized that that one little image brought all the rest of it together in a in a way and then camels on the on the new album a song called camels is based on a dream my wife had just about camels dying in the desert and dropping to their knees and uh, i was just like that's a good image and then i added to it i figure dreams mean more than anything a mortal could come up with um, so you might as well repeat them to other people. <laughs> Especially, you know, having that image of the black dog, because if I remember, you know, I don't know a lot about the interpretations, but I think I remember that being uh, sort of paralleled with death in some way. And, and, and there's the camel as well and, and the way the album ends. 
and and maybe that would come naturally. I mean, maybe you needed the balance on the record because at one point you're talking about so much new life. Does death sort of put it on you know a level playing field for you? Yeah, I mean, I tried to cover on this record. I wanted everything from the most basic human needs and then the loftiest human needs or desires, kind of the earthly and the cosmic and birth and death. And I just, I really wanted to look at things or look at where I was at at the moment, uh, from inside and out and from close up and far away. And I think that's one reason why there's so many songs, because there's just so many different voices piping up. Well, I'll ask about a couple lines, though, and I hope I'm not getting too personal in this one, but it's such an interesting line that stands out. Did your wife mind the laying out the towel bit of uh, of that song? <laughs> um, you know, I thought a lot of people were going to be asking me about that, but you're actually the first. <laughs> I, you know, I, I sheepishly cleared it with her first before I played her the song, and um, yeah, she she was fine with it. She liked it. <laughs> it's a really personal moment, and, and I'm honestly going to say uh, not a specific subject that I've ever heard in a song. And, 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 and I'll say the word period sex. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, I've, I've never heard anyone sing about that. Yeah, well, none you have. <laughs> you with the Bill Callahan. <laughs> With such a long catalog, uh, you know, uh, so many great records, I don't know how much looking back you do. Do you see all the songs in the albums that they were birthed, or, or does at some point they all start to blend in in a way? Um, no, they kind of stick. Um, I mean, I don't listen to the old records, but I know them very well. And they do, I mean, all, all the songs tend to, I think a record is embryonic songs get as soon as, they're conceived kind of and they're not quite finished and then the birthing them is playing them for people um either in your house or on the road so but then they kind of the more you play them they start to grow up a little bit and then get an identity that is separate from you know their live identity is separate from their recorded identity i think and then they kind of become a big family because they're you know the songs from different records are all spending time with you know the songs from other records and they have to they kind of influence influence each other because they are then what is played together in a set and so the songs do kind of re relax into themselves i think as as they get exposed to the world Two of your records do do celebrate sort of their anniversaries this year. I, I mentioned one of them earlier was Sometimes I Wish I Were an Eagle with with Eidmall. And and Knock Knock was a, an entry point for a lot of us, um, you know, because of, of the movie High Fidelity, if, you know, you hadn't followed your career before then. Uh, and I'll admit that, that that is where I started with Cold-Blooded Old Times. Does having a song that is connected to something like a movie like that, does that change the way it feels to you at all? It didn't because I could barely hear that song in the movie. <laughs> I was like, I know this is the scene where where it's supposed to be, but I, I can barely I can barely hear it. So, you know, I don't think it made a it didn't make a dramatic impression on me, like as if it was blaring during the opening credits or something like that. And I didn't a lot of people told me that that's where they first heard about me, which is great. Um, but I guess it was pre-internet times and so it's kind of hard to really gauge where you know when people new people were getting on board right. and how so it wasn't a lot of people have said that, but that didn't didn't change my relationship with the song. It's a great classic that I that I still love, and and, and you know I, I'll leave it with a, another compliment that Shepherd and the Sheep's Confess because there are I don't mind saying I'm not overpainting it when I'm saying there are some classics on here uh, right off the bat, and you know we we started playing, you know Watch Me Get Married, and and it's a great song as well. So again, Bill, congratulations on this new record. It's it's great to have you back again, and uh, and with so much music being thrown at us, I, I really appreciate it. Good. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Yeah, it's nice to talk to you. You too. Uh, we'll see you around. Take care. Yeah. Okay. Bye. Bye. A huge thanks to Bill Callahan. The new record, it's a double album called Shepherd in a Sheepskin Vest, and it's available now. Before you get out of here, don't forget, I hope you hit the subscribe button. Again, you can do that uh, anywhere you get your favorite podcasts. That includes iTunes and Apple Podcasts. 
Spotify, and YouTube as well. And wherever you're listening from, uh, go ahead and leave a comment. Tell me where, where you are and um, if you enjoyed the series. In fact, you can uh, always give it a review and a rating. Always helpful. After that, you can head to WFPK.org. Again, that's where I do a show every Monday through Friday, the Kyle Meredith with Radio Show. Uh, Monday through Friday at 6 p.m. Eastern. You can also find some bonus episodes of this series. Consequenceofsound.net has your music and film news. You can also find me at Twitter, at Kyle Meredith, Facebook, slash Kyle Meredith. And that does it for another edition. I'm Kyle Meredith. I'll see you next time. Consequence Podcast Network.